Okay, well, I'm Steve. Um, if you've been active in the community, you've probably used some of the libraries I've been involved in. Um, so I created Spider Gazelle and I've been working on the JWT project, uh, community project, um, and I contributed the multicast support to Crystal Core. Uh, so I'm the technical co-founder of a company called PlaceOS or Place Technology. Um, a few years ago, we were a, a scrappy startup building our products on Ruby. Um, so we were pivoting where the market had traction. So whilst our Ruby implementation of our product uh, could have been better, generally speaking, uh, Crystal was a revolution for our company. Um, so as you can see, Kim, whose private chat I've taken out of context and, and now presented to the world, um, is a very experienced developer. And I feel in many ways, this kind of conversation is reminiscent of um, how people felt when discovering Ruby after Rails was released. Um, so I'm very excited about what's happening in the Crystal community. <clears throat> so a quick overview of what the company does. Uh, I've butchered some of our marketing slides. Um, so hopefully no one from marketing watches this presentation. Um, uh, PlaceOS, which is our main product, is a integration platform. So it takes data from multiple sources um, to build what's called an in industry a digital twin of a building or workplace. Um, and then it uses that data to create new experiences for, for staff in the building. Uh, the platform is crystal, the drivers are crystal, and the front end is, is mostly Angular. Um, so some of our more recent work uh, involves using wireless meeting room and desk booking location data to build a contact tracing solution. Uh, this was all done in a workplace without staff having to install anything on their mobile devices or laptops. Um, there's just enough information generated by corporate systems when you're using uh, your network. Um, without requiring any extra sensors. Um, so we, report, we, we perform deep integrations and then manipulate the data into a useful form. And uh, finally, one of our first in-production crystal projects is a healthcare video consultation product. Um, this was built as part of a government run healthcare system here in Australia. Uh, it connects doctors, patients, translators um, via video chat. Um, and whilst the project kicked off before COVID, uh, primarily to cater for patients living in the outback or patients that required translators, uh, it's become a critical part of the government's COVID response. Um, so this reduces the number of patients having to physically visit doctors. Um, and as you probably know, Australia is currently doing reasonably well on the COVID front. Um, unfortunately, I can't say the same about our climate policies. Um, so as a traditional startup, we iterated and pivoted as we grew, uh, you know, make it work, sell it, iterate. Um, so many things were wrong with the Ruby version of the product that was hard to deploy, hard to maintain, um, impossible to scale. And the reason it was possible to scale is because we've got a um, stateful application and we're building it on rails and it just wasn't architectured amazingly. Um, we ended up rolling our own IO reactor because the blocking operations Ruby supplied didn't scale vertically um, and a vent machine being only single threaded didn't quite scale as, not, uh, as much as we'd like either. Uh, so we wrote our own web server, so it's like run on the reactor. Then we had to rewrite Ruby libraries to not block the reactor, abstract IO from logic. Um, that said, we proved the market and um, once in place in an organization, it's very easy to build things on the platform that, that a bes bespoke product wouldn't be able to achieve with a reasonable budget. Um, so cost and time-wise, we're smashing expectations. Um, and it was probably around this point that we noticed Crystal. I, I don't think the garbage collector was implemented at the time, 
Um, but it was looking promising when we started playing around with it. So like anyone that discovers a new toy, we try and a hand at building yet another crystal framework, uh, which we called Spider Gazelle. Um, we basically wanted something that looked a bit like Rails smashed together with Sinatra because Rails sort of split the, um, the router from the controllers and that was a bit annoying. Um, so we've effectively merged the router with the controllers. Um, so technically Spider Gazelle is just macros sitting on top of a router. Um, and that's to try and get it as much performance out of the framework as possible. Uh, we actually, we originally used router CR for this. Um, and then we changed to a project by the Amber team. Um, but now we're using the lucky router. And all, all those changes were made without any breaking changes to the Spider Gazelle API. So we built Spider Gazelle to get acquainted with Crystal and we put, put it to use almost immediately. And one of the big issues we had with Ruby was the time it takes to parse JSON and the global lock that was slowing things down immensely. Um, so we had the Crystal, so we had Crystal handling CPU intensive payloads at first and then just allowing the Ruby app to query those payloads or query the process results. Um, and we kept doing this, so it became a pattern. Uh, part of this move to putting small crystal services into production meant we had to build pipelines for crystal components. And after a relatively small amount of time, we had a sub 20 megabyte minimal image compared to our Ruby monolith, which was coming in around 600 megabytes. Um, and we did that with the Alpine Docker images that, that, uh, that are available for crystal. Um, so we found that serverless runtimes like AWS Fargate were perfect for running Crystal, and we could integrate them with our, with our code pipelines. So at the time, we had Travis running tests and specs, then CodeFresh would do the builds, push up to Docker Hub, um, and then signal Fargate, and we'd get automatic deploys. Um, today, we're moving to GitHub Actions because it gives you a bit more control. Um, so we're using uh, uh, Docker X or X build X to generate ARM images. Um, and the other benefit of these really small single executable Docker images is that they're super secure. Um, so our, our platform gets regularly penetration tested by the corporations that we install in and everyone's always pleasantly surprised by our crystal images. So jumping into a bit of, a bit of code, um, the limitation, like, so a thought that I've often had is that limitations are the structures that support understanding and create creativity. So if you had a spoken language that didn't have rules or common structures, the infinite possibilities would erode your ability to understand one another. And I personally feel that Crystal has perfected the balance of flexibility and limitations, making it far more likely that you'll write code that's easy for a human to interpret. Um, so one of the common anti-patterns I'd become accustomed to in Ruby code is the use of an options hash to initialize objects. Um, this seemed to make sense until after you've used Crystal for a day and realize how obscure it is. Like, what are the options? What types do the options accept? What if the options change? Um, it often means you're running through code, looking, trying to work out what options you need to change to make something happen. And it's a bit super annoying. Um, so the other big annoyance with Ruby is having to choose between named and implicit arguments. I understand that Ruby added named arguments as an answer to the options, options hash, but because there's so much legacy out there, it hasn't really resolved anything. Um, so the crystal way is just so much more elegant. Um, and there's a heap of other things that make crystal epic to work with over Ruby, such as IO over, like Ruby's got IO over binary strings, which is like odd. 
Um, UTF-8 as the only string format in Crystal is awesome. Like we've had so many obscure issues with stuff, saving files on a Windows computer. And then you're talking to like a hardware device and it's expecting like UTF-8 or, or uh, ASCII or something. And you're getting UTF-16 just because someone saved the file on Windows. Um, method overloading makes, makes code more readable. Interface and abstract classes are great, like OO features in Crystal. And, and obviously types make everything so much more readable. Um, and I, I feel like the Ruby implementation of types that's coming in Ruby 3 uh, with, and, and things like Sorbet uh, just seem to add more noise to the code and make it less readable. So one of the challenges we've had with a distributed application, uh, and in this case, a stateful distributed application, uh, is coordinating the various processes and tasks. Uh, previous to Crystal, we used promises because uh, that allows you to do map reduces uh, and coordinate all that. So a promise for anyone who doesn't know is a structured way of handling asynchronous opera operations, transforming data and handling errors in what might be a complicated chain of async actions. Uh, so the example I have on the screen shows how a promise is conceptually similar to a try catch block. Um, it's not a perfect example, but uh, so they make it easy, for example, to perform three tasks in parallel, perform the transform the results as they're returned, and then merge the data once all the tasks are complete. Um, so we'd roll their own library in Ruby, and but one disadvantage with Ruby is that like everything's an object and anything can be returned at any time. So every now and then, uh, the exception in the catch block would be just another object, like a string. I'm sure that it's, uh, there's a bug somewhere. Um, and it doesn't sound that bad, but once the application is complicated enough and your tasks aren't known at compile time, uh, it introduces so much unpredictability and, it, and just mentally tiring to actually uh, deal with that. So the Crystal implementation solves that with types, like it won't compile if you make that kind of mistake. And one of the impressive things we managed to achieve with the Crystal library was inferred types based on the return value of blocks. So this allowed us to have full promise chaining and evolving data types and guarantees from the compiler that operations we wanted to perform are valid at any step in the process. Uh, so it's sort of hard to express how amazing that is like Ruby and JavaScript are dynamic, but here we have a compiled language effectively doing the exact same thing, uh, just with a whole lot of additional guarantees. Um, so the library itself is sort of this master class of compiler manipulation. Like, I'm frankly amazed we made it work at all. So, so at this point, we weighed the options in terms of our main product. Like we'd had, we had a choice of either refactoring with Ruby um, or moving to Crystal. And I think we moved reasonably early on. So it would have been like the week the garbage collector was added, something like that. Um, the rewrite took about one and a half years from the point we made the decision to switch to the first production deployment. Um, and along the way, we had various challenges to overcome. The, the first goal was to have feature parity with the Ruby version. And a lot of that involved building libraries for the various communication protocols we needed to support. So the, what I've got on the screen is just a collection of, of protocols that we were targeting. And, and they're all available in the Spider Gazelle organization. But we're able to pump these out really quickly. Uh, so as I mentioned, the product PlaceOS is a tool for building uh, digital representations of a building a workplace. And part of this is writing the drivers that need to run the uh, devices in the building or services. Um, so these drivers are hot loaded into the running system based on the database configuration. Um, you can think of them a bit like running code on AWS Lambda. Uh, the Ruby version is on the left and the Crystal version is on the right. 
the public methods such as restart, which is down the bottom there, um, are enumerated and make up the public interface of the driver. So I've included that small screenshot for our management tool with the list of functions that are available in a location services driver. Now the drivers themselves are very similar, but I do feel like the crystal version is more readable. Like we've got a hundred milliseconds versus a non-descriptive integer on Ruby. Um, the Ruby code is just loaded at runtime into the monolith um, of our old platform with all the introspection happening at runtime, instance of the classes are directly managed by that monolith. And the class names are being guessed based on the file name in a similar way to how Rails works in dev mode. Um, now the crystal version uses macros to introspect the file at compile time and then has command line switches for ex extracting the metadata. Um, and when launched in driver mode, it exposes an API over standard input and error output. Uh, so we don't waste any file descriptors. Uh, and and that is, that's what allows the management service to operate it. So and with standard output used for logs. Uh, so having the drivers around a standalone executables in crystal, it was just a massive advantage in terms of code isolation. Uh, no single component could take down the system simpler to test, debug, all those, all those good things. Uh, so in our, in our quest to make everything testable, we built some tooling for testing drivers. Uh, we didn't want to shard for each driver as that would involve too much management overhead. Um, well, there's still some debate in our company about that. Uh, but the, the spec runner I've got on the screen here, uh, which is itself an, a spider gazelle app, emulates our management service to launch driver executables and start an instance of a driver. Uh, so this is a really simple spec. However, we can emulate very complex cross driver interactions and the driver itself is running as it would in production. So a very good real world testing framework. Um, and one of the cool things we've done with that is that compile with debug symbols option. Um, when ticked, it launches the driver with GD, GDB debugger as the host for remote debugging. And then you can step through debug on the command line. Uh, we haven't got that working in VS code yet, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, so now, so basically I just wanna have a quick overview of of the services that make up the system. Um, so things like database uh, are obviously not crystal, but um, we use RethinkDB as our event bus and any of the crystal components can watch for changes to tables and that's how we get, that's how we can isolate everything nicely. Um, so the core service here is what manages drivers and e ETCD is used to track how many instances of core are running. And then we use consistent hashing to route requests um, from any of the other services that need to talk to a driver directly. Uh, so all these services expose HTTP APIs via Spider Gazelle. Um, and we've got sort of standard request ID generation and um, and that ID is forwarded to any cross service requests so we can track events running, happening through the system. Um, so that's it for my slides. I'll jump, I'll jump into a quick, a quick uh, demo. Um, so this is, this is an in progress uh, system that we're building for a company in America called Ashray. And I think they're one of the big building uh, standards company actually. Um, so so this is just some of the introspection we have in the, in, in the system. Um, so we can see what's actually running on, on the cores, CPU they're using. The memory is 
definitely not accurate, so you can probably know that. Um, And I think actually, so if you had a look at some of this code earlier, you can see that we've got uh, logging events. Um, and we can introspect in real time those logging events. So if we tick there, um, so this Meraki dashboard will send us location data for people on Wi-Fi periodically. Um, I'll take a few more things just so we can see, see any logs coming through. And we can actually have a look at the, how many webhooks are coming through at any one time. Awesome. So we can see it's sending through, sending through area data. We can even get the back traces. I've got a parsing issue here, which I have to deal with. Um, so obviously this is a work in progress building. Uh, I don't think anyone's moved in yet, which is a little annoying because um, there's not much to show here, but it's still, it's still pretty cool. All this stuff that we built in Crystal and just the, um, I don't know, it, 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 like, it's a very complicated system, but Crystal made it so much easier to actually achieve. And a lot of that, I guess, was to do with deployment. So really small Docker images, um, being able to, uh, being able to deploy on say Fargate or, or Kubernetes. Um, just made things so much simpler. And this is sort of like the end product that, so there's no one, no one on the floor at the moment. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll open the floor to questions. Hey Steve, uh, thanks. This is, uh, and thanks for the, for the live demo. I think that, um, helps uh, putting things in in, uh, uh, in the right spots for people uh, listening. Uh, we have a couple of questions. One uh, that is actually uh, related to a question that was asked earlier, given that you're running a, a project of a certain size in production, uh, and we were talking earlier about uh, Crystal's com Crystal compiler's speed, uh, do you find that to be an issue in your um, continuous integration with user deployment process? Yeah, not really, because I mean, so our Ruby app, the spec just took ages to run. Um, so yeah, the time it took to launch our old app and run a spec is sort of almost equivalent to the compile time. So realistically, there's been no change in, in terms of, uh, but, but then we've got, because all our projects are now a bit smaller, so we've gone to microservices, they actually compile faster and run specs faster than than the Ruby app ever did. And using the code pipelines, so if a spec passes, it'll make a build automatically and then that gets pushed. And we've got uh, dev environments running in Fargate and they just live update with on the edge commits effectively. So you can test in production or what, what would be production uh, pretty much straight away, which is really cool. Thanks. Uh, there's also another question around uh, the, the idea of being early adopters of Crystal and the business and political difficulties related to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as the co-founder, that was the technical co-founder, that was my call to make, uh, which made it easy because I liked Crystals. Um, it was a risk. Um, and I guess, you know, we still sometimes hit things where we've got to build something quickly, uh, but because most of the Ruby um, solutions can be ported reasonably quickly to Crystal, uh, like we had to do a Q, we had to do QR code generation a couple of weeks back. Um, so we built 
the Q, a QR library just based off the Ruby one. And that took about six hours probably of dev time. Uh, yeah, so in terms of resources, the, the system's way more efficient. So the Ruby app, the Ruby app basically just uses one core. So we ended up having to scale up um, the actual server resources. Um, one, so part of the reason to switch to Crystal was speed. Um, and we sort of changed, at, at the time, Crystal didn't have threads, um, but because we're running drivers as their own standalone executables. They've got their own reactor and they, they it's effectively the same thing. Um, so, and we couldn't really scale out the Ruby app very well. We, we did scale it out for sort of API requests and yeah, it was just very hacky. Uh, whereas Crystal is just faster, utilizes more cores. We've got it in a distributed system now it's easy to deploy, uh, it's secure. Yeah, it's been, been a great experience. 